Hi, I'm Ken Lebo with the Sure Tech Express, and today I want to talk to you about the MacBook Air that I purchased over the weekend. I actually traded in my iPad Pro. So let me start by giving you a little bit of background or history with my devices in recent years. My first uh, decision that I needed to make was I going to lean towards the Microsoft PC world or the Apple world. And basically, as I've been building out my ecosystem with my iPhones over the years, and that includes messages and email and contacts and iCloud, music apps, photos, etc. I decided to lean towards Apple over PCs. Okay, so then back in 2021, I was thinking, well, can I actually, from a work perspective, use the new iPad Pro and will it replace my computer? And I made videos back then where, and I did a lot of research, and basically I went ahead and pulled the trigger in 2021. But what I realized, it was about 95% there with the iPad Pro, but there were certain things that I couldn't do. For example, some file types or files I couldn't open, or I needed some software like Microsoft Office with more features and functionality than the iOS versions. Um, and then of course, there are some website compatibility issues because your browser goes into a mobile mode and therefore it couldn't access certain things on certain websites. So therefore in 2022, I bought an inexpensive HP uh, uh, laptop to handle that 5%. So this year I decided to pull the trigger and trade in my iPad Pro um, for uh, a MacBook Air M2, and which is what I did last weekend. Um, so the first thing was is that the, uh, the, verse, the, the iPad that I bought was about $1,100. Um, they gave me a trade in, the maximum trade in for my iPad, which I lost a lot of money on because it was only a couple years old but they gave me $445. So this is the net of what, of about $800 of what I ended up paying. And then I couldn't trade in any accessories like the magic keyboard or the, or the pencil and the covers and other things. So those things that we're gonna sell, I'm gonna sell on eBay because um, Apple won't take those back or trade those in. Um, but what I really learned was is that now that the, the MacBook Air and the Ventura operating system is really integrated into the Apple ecosystem. So when my phone rings or I get messages and working with photos and iClouds and certain apps and things like that, I am really completely integrated into that Apple ecosystem, but getting all the power of what the laptop brings to the table. And that gives me about a 99.99% .99 compatibility I don't know if there's still something PC or Microsoft specific that won't work on this laptop, but I highly doubt that I'm gonna run into that kind of issue. Um, so the last thing that I needed to do was, okay, I've made this decision. Now, which MacBook do I buy? Do I buy the Pro, do I buy the Air, do I buy the M1 or the M2? And here's what I decided. First of all, um, the Pro is great if you're a software developer or you're doing heavy video editing and things like that. Therefore, um, that, that's a great device. But I went with the Air for my business and personal needs because it looks like it's powerful enough now to do all the things I needed to do. Um, so it's thinner and it's lighter, so it's easier to carry around. Um, so what are some of the things that the... Uh, that, that I need that the MacBook Air has on the M2 versus the M1. And here's what I found out comparing the two on the Apple site. One is that the M2 has a better display, liquid retina display. Um, it also has a 1080p camera and I do a lot of Zoom meetings, so I think that's good. Um, the speakers are better. Uh, both the M2 M1 have a 15 to 18 hour battery life, which is pretty good. Um, and then the colors, uh, I know this sounds kind of uh, not very relevant, but there's a new midnight color that I really liked. That's with the M2. Of course, it wasn't the main decision maker, but that's another thing is that I like that new midnight color. So I chose that. Um, and then we get into memory. 
So the new M2 does come in eight uh, gigs of uh, memory. It also, of RAM, it also has, you can get 16 or 32. And my thing is, is that if you can't do it with the eight gigs, then don't pay for the upgrade. You're better off just getting a pro then. Um, and then on the disk space, I looked at how much disk space I was using on my iPad, about 130 gigabytes of disk space because everything else is in the cloud and I was syncing everything to the cloud. Therefore, um, basically the minimum 256 gigabyte worked for me. I don't need the 512 or the, the one or two terabyte. Um, therefore, I was able to buy the, the, uh, the most inexpensive out of the M2s right out of the box. Well, I hope this review and, and my decision-making process um, helps you out in some way as maybe you're looking for a change or some direction. Always happy to, uh, to talk to anyone who uh, wants some advice. Uh, you can reach me at ken at insuretechexpress.com. Thank you.